Good afternoon. Welcome to the meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission for July 22nd, 2009. We have a quorum present, so I'll call the meeting to order at this time. First item on today's agenda is to approve the minutes of June 17th, 2009 and July 8th, 2009. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? Hearing none, I'll declare those approved as submitted. We have one public hearing scheduled this afternoon, that being to consider the Murfreesboro subdivision regulations and street design specifications. The City of Murfreesboro and the planning and engineering staff are the applicants for it. Mr. Adelot, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, this is a project that uh, we've been working on for the better part of a year. And uh, just to give you a real quick um, outline of what we've done, we've initially hired a consulting firm, Neil Schaefer, to assist with uh, developing street specifications. Then we went through a process of uh, drafting them and fine-tuning them. In uh, January 7th of 2009, we had a public hearing on the subdivision regulations. Uh, after the public hearing, we deferred action to allow some issues to be worked out. The subdivision regulations are the basically the rules for how you subdivide land. This is not site plans. This has to do with public streets and public infrastructure. This is the rules on final plats, preliminary plats, master plans, and such. So this is something that, uh, as a growing community and a community that's poised for more growth in the future, will be a, a very important document. The current documents that we use really date back to 1974. And actually through the years we've evolved a little bit to have a, a little bit different process than what we were using back in 74. <clears throat> so uh, uh, this is an important uh, document. It's going to be something that's going to be used a lot. One of our problems with our old document was that it wasn't something that we could post on the Internet. It wasn't something that was uh, user friendly. And it had been influenced in many respects by, by, by usage and by different staffs who had come through the years. Uh, since that uh, time, we've had four city engineers. We've had three planning directors. So uh, there has been some evolution of staff and also uh, evolution in technologies. A companion of this, and Ms. Uh, Logan will, will go over this, is the street specifications. They are actually a subset of the sub regulations. Uh, in order to um, uh, move this forward, this is a public hearing, and what the Planning Commission will need to do is to conduct a public hearing and then take action on these. I would recommend that this be one public hearing, but that the uh, people who are interested in subdivision regulations maybe speak first, and those who are more interested in the street specifications speak second. Uh, certainly, if they've got comments on both, go ahead and make comments on both. But if they're really more oriented to one or the other, to maybe do it uh, so that we can better process any um, uh, testimony that we received today. In preparation for this public hearing, we did advertise in the newspaper, and of course that's that's probably the uh, not the uh, most comprehensive way to, to get people's attention. But as an abundance of caution and an effort to get the word out, we've announced it at several meetings. We've uh, posted on our internet. We've sent um, uh, correspondence to uh, different engineering companies who have uh, done a lot of business with us over the years so that they'd have a chance to have, uh, look into them, read them, and offer us input. Uh, we've had uh, several postings through the spring, uh, culminating with the one that began about two weeks ago in preparation for this public hearing. The, uh, what has been posted on there for the subdivision regulations is exactly what you received in your materials. This is what was posted last so that the uh, uh, people who are wanting to participate in the public hearing will have the same document or have had access to the same document that you've had. Also, we've had copies of this available at our front counter uh, so that people who might have wanted to come in could, could get it. And in some cases, people who have called me about it, I've sent them email copies of this so that they could have copies without going to our website. Uh, I believe that these uh, regulations are in, in good order and ready to be uh, considered. A couple of the big issues that came out of our last public hearing in, in January had to deal with sidewalks. Uh, the concern being from the uh, building industry that sidewalks, if we're going to require sidewalks, they were concerned that if we required them to be built before the house is built on the lot that fronts the street uh, where their lot is at, that the, there would be substantial damage to the uh, sidewalks by third, party, uh, third parties, what I call the negligent third parties, and thereby they'll have to reconstruct the whole sidewalk or substantial parts of it at an additional expense to, to them or to their buyer. Over the course of the spring and into the early summer, we had a series of meetings and, and discussions with uh, the Humber's Association and representatives of it, uh, people in the industry, developers in the community, about what the best approach was. 
with, with some, uh, I guess, initial reluctance, uh, we, we have adopted a process in this set whereby the developer can make an option. If the developer wants to build the sidewalks, he can build them, and we would encourage him to do so. That's fine. He can build them uh, at his, uh, him being the responsible party. In some cases, where the developer is also the builder, that may be the option that they want to do. Or, if the developer wants to, he can opt for it to become the responsibility of the lot owner. And in that case, we will place a note on the final plat that that is to be expected so that when they get their building permit, uh, the uh, sidewalk will have to be constructed before the uh, certificate of occupancy is issued. And if it's not, uh, we would allow a performance year to be, to be posted. Sometimes when you uh, get ready to get your certificate of occupancy, maybe in the dead of winter, or it may be storming uh, a hurricane coming through, and it's just not a good time to be pouring sidewalks, so a performance surety is the, the best measure. Uh, we'd want this to be for nine months, so to get someone through uh, three seasons, and surely they'd have an opportunity to build it by then. So the performance surety may be an approach that they want to do. In those instances where a lot front, or rather a sidewalk is along a street and there are no lots along it, that would still be the developer's obligation. And he'd have to build that before the, uh, the building permits are issued in other parts of the subdivision. The uh, developers, the builders, the engineers I spoke with about this approach seem to embrace it. This seems to be consistent with what they want to see. They feel that this is going to be an approach that will work for them. Um, there were some other things that we uh, discussed in the, uh, during the public hearing, some of the vague words. Uh, that uh, are, seem to be a little bit open-ended. We've endeavored to, uh, to remove all of those so that they're no longer open-ended, and that seems to have uh, passed the muster with those I've discussed it with. Uh, I'll, have a, I'll be available to answer questions about the subdivision regulations. Now Ms. Uh, Logan has a little bit of a, a discussion about the uh, street specifications. Just to put her uh, in perspective with this, Although she was not part of the engineering department, she has spearheaded the effort to uh, see to it that the uh, street specifications are, are, are moved through the adoption process. So she spent a lot of time coordinating with our city engineer, our legal staff, and uh, the uh, engineers in our community to, to get them to you today. Ms. Logan, good yes. afternoon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. The street design specifications are the technical document that will accompany the subdivision regulations in which specifications for the design building in our community will be outlined. And before you today, you'll have um, approximately 16 street specifications, about five drainage specifications, five driveway specifications. And we have endeavored to modernize these specifications to meet um, what is um, currently being used in the design community while still also maintaining um, designs that are being used by contractors who work um, a lot here in Murfreesboro. Um, we've had these reviewed by our local engineering firms and um, have taken their suggestions and implemented them um, into the document, hopefully to the point now where um, all of the specifications that are before you today um, are at a level where they have agreed to the design that's being proposed. Um, and so that's something that we've worked very hard on to make sure that these design specifications um, will work within our design community. The um, one item that will um, that I would like to address that will have a slight change in it if you also approve it is on the design ST12. Um, that's for our concrete curb and gutter design, and if you it's ST12, it's at the very end um, in the exhibits. The street specs are at the very back probably of your packets. And Joseph's holding it up, Mr. Lamb. <clears throat> The one modification that has been made is that um, on that curb design, you'll see that the bottom is shown at a slight slope, to be constructed at a slight slope. But um, we've reviewed what they do in Metro Nashville, and they they do port at a flat slope, and that's what's been requested by our contractors and our design community because they said it's just not going to be built at that slope in the field. It would be too hard to obtain that, and they would rather just pour it flat. So we've agreed to that change, and we would like to make that change in the final document if you all are so inclined. Um, continuing on, um, we feel like the, the design criteria that are in these street specifications will be to the benefit of our community and should work well with our subdivision regulations. We have not tried to um, 
copy any of the same definitions that were in the subdivision regulations. We didn't want there to be overlap and maybe a cause for um, there to be conflict later on in the future. And of course, the subdivision regulations are the prevailing documents so that if any question were to arise, we would refer to the subdivision regulations as these are essentially an appendix to the subdivision regulations. <clears throat> Ms. Logan. Yes, sir. I didn't see it, but I didn't have a chance to completely go through it all. Um, anything in there pertaining to sidewalks and the material as it crosses driveways in case the driveway is, is one material and the sidewalk is another? Yes, sir. It'll be a standard concrete 4,000 PSI. Okay, but as far as broom finish uh, with the driveway is exposed aggregate, let's say, uh, the sidewalk will still be broom finished going across the driveway? Yes, sir, it will be. What about be. the apron from the sidewalk to the road? Um, I would assume that the apron would be allowed to be a different of a different material. I would defer to Mr. Griffith if he would refer, require otherwise. Okay. The driveway ramp, it would also be concrete. What about a stamp concrete? Would you go from stamp concrete to smooth broom finished concrete back to stamp concrete? If we do allow a uh, stamp concrete uh, to make come out for that, but we didn't for exposed aggregates. Uh, not sure how that goes with the ADA requirements, and, and of course we have to follow those in all public areas. Okay, so you're saying the apron needs to be the same material as the sidewalk or the same material as the driveway? It, uh, right now we have it set up to be the same material as the driveway. Okay. So you'd have a driveway cutting I'm, through. I'm sorry. It would be the same, the same material as the, dry, as the sidewalk. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I know it gets complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Because otherwise you would have one material, then the sidewalk, then the, the other material rotating back and forth. This way you just have a clean break at the sidewalk exactly. forward is what yeah. you're saying. We're, we're, yes, essentially it's the, uh, the, the right-of-way, anything inside the right-of-way would, would be a 4,000 PSI concrete. And, and as we said, we do allow a stamped concrete uh, uh, that is a, uh, as an option. Uh, and, the, and again, the, the uh, example that you had brought up as far as an exposed aggregate, uh, we just have to make sure we have to check on any type of um, ADA concerns with that, whether or not that would be allowable. Would the ADA concerns be on driveway ramps or just on the uh, uh, intersection ramps? It, it winds up being on, on both uh, because since there are a point of access in the, uh, the right-of-way, we have to, uh, have to watch that on, on both the sidewalks, the, the handicap ramps, and the, the driveway ramps also. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> you said anything inside the right-of-way would all be uh, concrete, uh, smooth finished concrete? Yes. Right, so the back edge of the sidewalk toward the house would be the start of the uh, would be actually the end of the right of way is that what you're saying uh, what, I, what I'm asking here is if you see my point then if you're saying from the right of way in you're presuming that the starting where the driveway starts would be the end of the right of way yeah. And that it, might not always correspond. That is, that, that's true. And I, and I was, actually I was incorrect on that. We would, uh, anything past the sidewalk, we would change over to the, uh, to the driveway uh, uh, material. Uh, that's typically what we do on capital improvement projects and the same that we would on, on, uh, on subdivisions also. You're, I, I'm we, correct. I didn't see it in here, so we just need to make sure that wording is in there accordingly. Yes, yes sir. sir. We can make that change and implement it if you request. We ran into this quite a bit in Breckenridge's subdivision that comes to mind because there was a lot of confusion on on exactly what control there, and, and actually that went to the subdivision restrictions. Uh, and we've seen that uh, quite a bit on, on roundabouts, uh, uh, several different areas that uh, people want a different, uh, different look or a different finish, and that's the reason why we tried to address it uh, try to be a little bit more progressive with the stamped asphalt and the stamped concrete, and of course, coloring comes with both of those uh, also. And both those have been, have been found to, to be uh, ADA accessible. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? I, I have, I, you're going to have to explain this to me again one more time. You're going to have aggregate driveway, and then you're going to have a concrete 
broom finished concrete, and then you're going to have an apron that's aggregate. No, um, it, I was. It, it, it'll be concrete also. Okay, so the aggregate, so the apron and the sidewalk will be the same finish. Yes. Okay. What about a stamp concrete sidewalk? That won't in that particular lot. That that wouldn't be acceptable because of the we change the. Uh, no, we, we, the sidewalk. We we are making allowances for a um, for a stamped. Uh, we, and if if I can find it real quick in our it's on uh, page thirty eight, I believe. Of the street fit. That's stamped asphalt and stamped concrete. Yeah, I think we have we have both, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we have uh, section uh, 3.19 and 3.20. Really, 3.19 would be the stamped concrete. Um, and that's where we've um, uh, tried to make allowance for a more decorative decorative finish very similar to what we did out at the um, uh, out at the avenues and out at the uh, embassy suites hotel the uh, the plazas that we've we've constructed out there those are actually stamped concrete and then the crosswalks that we've completed uh, there and then also on middle tennessee boulevard and a couple other areas have been stamped asphalt but Mr. Young, does that cover your question? I'm still, because I'm still confused. It says it says for marked crosswalks. The, okay, All right, let's talk about the sidewalk. You're going to have in one lot. You're going to have a a sidewalk that's broom finished concrete. The next lot, you could have a stamped concrete. No, we would. It, it would be a consistent. Uh, okay. Whatever the developer uh, that was decided. It wouldn't for, be consistent if you did that. Yes. No. It would be. It would be whatever is consistent with it was, was designed for the subdivision. Yeah, and it wouldn't. And it necessarily wouldn't match the driveway. It would just. Uh, it would just be a decorative, uh, decorative touch to it. Uh, the anything behind the sidewalk going back towards the house. Would be the same finish as the driveway, uh, as the entire driveway. That's where we'd want to match up what the actual driveway was. I'm sorry, I I confused with uh, answer Mr. Lamb's question earlier. I think when he says uh, as the driveway, he's referring to the to the owner's choice. Pretty much, if it's uh, outside the right of way, it's theirs, and it's not public infrastructure, and they have the choice as to what kind of finish. But the public infrastructure has to be laid out on the construction plans, Thank basically you. signed off by the engineer as to what what is going to be the motif, if you will, and it must be compliant. And um, consistent and, uh, with And the consistent whole throughout. Consistent the that subdivision. Yes. Mr. Gilly. Yes, yeah, so what you're saying, that the sidewalks <coughs> and the aprons are going to be the same thing all the way throughout. The builder has the option of either broom finish or the, the two stamped options we talked about. Yes. And then the individual driveways, if they want those different, from the sidewalk back toward the house, that's fine. But it's not a matter of what Doug and I kind of had in our mind. You're coming along with the sidewalk, and just because somebody's driveway is stamped concrete, that they can no. throw a stamped concrete section of sidewalk. No, no. It, it, the, okay. it would be consistent throughout the uh, the subdivision. It would only be the driveways themselves that would uh, gotcha. that could have a change. But, Mr. Gilly, I'll make sure I'm right. Mm -hmm. You stated three options for, for broom finished or stamped. But there are other options that you would allow if the developers are, right, here's the way I want to do my sidewalk. I want to do it, say, you know, you've seen the picture frames uh, where they oh, yes. smooth around. They, I mean, sure. those are options that are available. Oh, sure. Yeah. We're, we're just saying the, the sidewalk is consistent throughout. It's not, it's not sure. going to stop and match each individual driveway and make sort of a hodgepodge exactly. of sidewalk and apron. Mm -hmm. In fact, is broom finished actually mentioned in the section? Yes. Mm -hmm. Under what? Uh, I've seen it in here somewhere. Finish. I think concrete sidewalks and drivers be finished in accordance with subsection 7109. Please. I've seen that term broom finish under one of those categories. We just need to make sure, I think, uh, Mr. Griffin, that 
the use of the word right of way. Once again, I think Mr. Adelot brought it up. Inside the right of way, it's got to be consistent where really it's going to be starting from the edge of the sidewalk to inside the right of way will need to be consistent. Yes, sir. For instance, from right of way forward. But no, it's not because your sidewalk may not extend all the way back into the lot all the way to the end of the right of way. So your driveway needs to needs to go right to the sidewalk. Okay, okay. I, okay. I, I'm with you. I'm and the, the finish is the, and I don't think it actually calls out broom finish in our specifications, but in the 3.16.8 finish, uh, it talks about uh, uh, TDOT's standard specification for road and bridge or, or construction, uh, 701.09. And, and we did that some, um, uh, and we could we could very easily go back and, and change that. I think that that TDOT specification gets into a little bit more of the detail as far as how to actually do the finish. Uh, but we could certainly... Um, uh, on, on something that's used as often as that, we could even uh, incorporate some of that information into uh, these specifications if that's, if that's a preference. Well, no, that's not my preference. I just, we've been talking broom finish. I just didn't see it in here. I'd prefer to give you some flexibility to okay. allow the developer to do something yeah, that's, you know, that's not just locked into we're going to make you do broom finish. Yeah, the, the, the main thing that we're going to be looking at is just to make sure that it's ADA accessible and within reason something that uh, you know 20 years from now whenever it falls apart that we can uh, we'll be able to re repair okay any other questions for mr. Griffin thank you sir thank you appreciate your input any other questions or comments before we open the public hearing Chairman Lamb, I have one back to Mr. Adelot's uh, initial um, comments regarding the subdivision regulations and back to the sidewalk. Um, I'm glad that we came to a compromise with respects to allowing them not having to put the sidewalk on the front end. A little confused as to uh, who is going to be responsible for putting the sidewalk there. Is it going to be the developer? Is it going to be the builder, or is it going to be the homeowner? Okay. Yes. All right. Think, think first. Is, think, <laughs> well, think first is, it doesn't say that anywhere. Think, think first is the a builder is often the agent of the owner, or he is the owner. And if he is the owner, he is the responsible party. Uh, in the option where the developer says this will be the owner's responsibility to construct. So, so don't think of the developer, and, or rather as the builder and the owner as two separate entities at this point. Think of them as either the same or one of them being the agent of the other. So if you're building a house and you have a, 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 a there's a note on your plat of the uh, subdivision that you're, you're building in and it says that the, and basically the notation is spelled out in, in these uh, subdivision regulations, uh, that it's going to be the owner's responsibility. When the building permit is issued, there will be a note on the building permit that the sidewalk must be constructed before the certificate of occupancy will be issued. Uh, so that will be uh, uh, something that will be um, running with that permit. And it will be an inspection made before the certificate of occupancy is released. If it's not uh, constructed before the certificate of occupancy is released, then the certificate of occupancy will not be released until a performance surety is posted or the sidewalk is constructed. Okay. What if I buy the lot but I choose not to build for a long period of time? It may be that there's a long period of time before the sidewalk's constructed. On that one lot? That's right. Mm. Seems like the answer is it's the owner who requests the building permit so is responsible. That's one of the unfortunate things about sidewalks. Right now, we, we, we have a, um, we, our, our current approach is not working either. Even though we say that where sidewalks are required is the developer's responsibility. We end up saying, well, sidewalks on some streets, sidewalks not on other streets. Sidewalks on this side, but not on that side. Well, just as soon as they start work, they always want to put the sidewalks on the other side of the street. And that messes everybody up. What we're going to do here is say sidewalks for everybody, but they will be built. It may be sometime before they are built. Uh, but what will happen is uh, it will go with the property. And it may be, it may be five years uh, before the, um, someone builds on that lot. But when they do, the obligation will come about. 
Now, someone may decide to go ahead and, and build their, their uh, sidewalks, and developers may decide to go ahead and let the owner's association have the ability to go ahead and build it because he sees it coming too. Uh, he may be that he wants to put in his contracts that if the owner hasn't built upon his lot within X number of um, years after he bought it, that he has to go ahead and finish up his uh, sidewalks. I think he will call attention to those situations that maybe developers don't think about now. But yes, sir, it may be a period of time for some of those gaps uh, along some streets are, are finished. The, the gap would be created based upon, as, as uh, Mr. Halliburton said, deferral of building on the lot. Is that correct? Or the failure to build on the lot. Okay. His scenario is I've bought a lot in the subdivision, but I'm not ready to build. I'm, I might just hold on to that lot for a long time. <clears throat> Mr. Straight a lot ground stabilization section, particularly on page 44 when they're talking about sod. You're do we need to limit, specs, sir? You're talking about street specs. Yes, yes sir. 47. Um, okay. Yes. Do we need to limit that only to Bermuda grass and blended fescues, or should we put something in there about or other grasses approved by the engineer or the uh, city horticulturalist? I don't, I'm, as Orger comes to mind, but if they're Developing, you know, years down the road, uh, other hybrids of grass that becomes very popular. I mean, should we put something in here to allow some flexibility? And I know right now it's either going to be fescue or or, or Bermuda, but you know, there's a lot of zoysia use out there too, right? Well, now. one one thing we encountered is those uh, instances where people have used the wrong kind of grass, and it's and it's been a failure. For instance, um, a someone might use annual ryegrass. Mm -hmm. Boy, it comes out quick. It looks pretty, but it don't it's come gone. back. It's gone. And we want to prohibit those type of uses. Uh, this is a an area where Miss um, Holloway was uh, brought into the uh, discussion loop, I believe. And Mr. Griffith, I think, gave quite a bit of consideration. So I, I'd like for him to maybe answer the, the thoughts about Sorry, all Sorry, Mr. Griffin. That's okay. No, that's what I'm here for. Uh, she actually, uh, her and her staff actually did write this section. Um, on that particular uh, uh, question, I, I think Joseph's correct. We're just, uh, and I think most everything that we've done here with the uh, specifications are are trying to, to match what we're doing today uh, as a uh, as a, uh, as a regular occurrence. Uh, I think the good thing about these specifications, uh, unlike the other ones dating back to 1974, is it gives. Uh, both uh, both myself or the city engineer and the planning commission the ability to go back in and do updates to it uh, so I, I I would think that just as you said if, if, if we go along and find a new hybrid or a new type of grass that's uh, that's working better I don't think that would be anything more than than just uh, doing a uh, a, 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 a I'm just trying to think of what we actually called it a Technical specification. Technical specification. Technical, de technical design specification, uh, mm -hmm. or, or a design bulletin. That's what we're a design bulletin, and we'd be able to add that uh, to these specifications. You wouldn't see any need. The only grass I could think of, other than Bermuda and fescue, now would be maybe zoysia, and you wouldn't see any need to put that in here at this point. Uh, not as, not as a. Uh, I guess as a blanket specification to the whole, I, I think we could probably look at that on a um, uh, on an individual basis. And I think uh, there's some language in there that would uh, basically states that uh, uh, that these are minimum designs. Uh, I think that would even be a uh, uh, maybe a little bit higher quality, and that uh, we could certainly look at that uh, on an individual basis. What I'm saying is, reading this, you don't have that ability to. To make that decision, it's, it says it has to be one of the two, and so that's why I'm wondering if you shouldn't have a clause in there unless a higher quality uh, grass, as determined by City whoever you City want to, uh, is approved. I mean, I'm just right now you don't have the ability to go in there and decide. Okay, Zorsha's fine. I think that our uh, city engineer, under these regulations, would have the ability to say we have reviewed Zoysia, or as, as an mm -hmm. example, uh, and uh, determined that it will meet the objectives of these street specifications, and that he would issue a bulletin that it would be an acceptable alternative. 
and I think that's what he's referring to. If you refer to page six, and it's actually the um, last uh, paragraph, you see, and, that, and that's sort of a, we, we realize that new technologies are going to arise that we don't currently have, and they may come faster than our ability to get them to you to do a, uh, a regulation and a public hearing process. Our idea is that we may go ahead and issue a technical bulletin for a situation that arises and then bring it back to the Planning Commission to, to amend these. And if, if something like a new grass comes along that is a good alternative, I would expect that's the approach that we'd want to take. Right now, I think that we do want to look at the uh, – uh, we, we, we deliberately brought to you the, the, the way it's written today because we think this is what we want to do. But, of course, we leave the door open to someone bringing to us a good alternative and for our review. Okay. Any other questions? Once again, thank you, Mr. Griffin. Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments before we open the public hearing? Okay. If you have not attended a public hearing at the Planning Commission, before we'll open the public hearing and ask you to come forward, please state your name, give your address. Uh, Make all your comments and questions directly to the Planning Commission itself. If you have questions, we'll ask the staff to answer them at the conclusion of the planning uh, of the public hearing. Uh, please keep your comments to no more than three minutes, if you would, please. With all that being said, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Chairman Lamb. Members of the Commission I want to, and staff, I want to thank the, uh, Joseph and the planning staff for working very diligently with the Rutherford County Home Builders Association. Mr. Swanson, yes. your name, please. Joe address. Swanson, 730 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Thank I've you. I've never been here before. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Joseph really uh, and staff really went uh, – out of their way to get in touch with the Government Affairs Committee at the Rupp County Home Builders and work diligent with, with us and had several meetings uh, on the regulations. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. We, we'd forgotten you. It had been so long since you'd been up. Will we see you again? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Seeing nobody come forward, I'll close the public hearing. All right, I have some conclusion yes, sir. Uh, comments. The, um, we believe that the subdivision regulations are ready to adopt. We uh, certainly heard nothing but support in our public hearing tonight or today. But the, um, the our reality is that in the future, as we begin to utilize these, we're going to see small things that came, come to our attention, and we're going to say, oops, we probably need to change that. And it will be the kind of things that come with uh, implementation and the practical use of a, of a new tool. So we expect that over the course of uh, the next six months, we're going to try to monitor those in the course of a year, of course, but bring back periodic updates to, to take into account where we find things. In fact, I expect that as we bring in site plans and subdivi or actually subdivision plats to the Planning Commission, you all have questions and we say, whoops, golly, we never even thought about that. So we'll, we'll come back with a scope of or maybe some uh, uh, housekeeping or fine-tuning amendments uh, in about six months. Uh, also, right now, the uh, subdivision regulations uh, that we have, there are some of them that are actually adopted by ordinance in our city code. And because of that, until they are um, repealed or amended to be consistent with what's here, uh, we have something that's at odds. We'd have a new regulation and a city code that are at odds, and the city code has to be amended by the city council. It won't require action by the planning commission, I don't believe. But uh, those have not yet been completely drafted. The legal department uh, and myself have sat down on a couple of occasions and looked at the scope of the work they need to do. Uh, and, and they're working on it, and they will be bringing something to the city council. So if you adopt these today, we would recommend that the effective date be the same date as those amendment ordinances to the city code become effective. And we expect that will probably be somewhere in the order of uh, September or October, because after you do a three readings on the ordinance, it adds 15 days for it to become effective. It takes a, a, just a little bit of time. So that's what we're looking at. At one point, we had considered making it maybe um, effective uh, uh, on a specific date, November 1 or, or October 1 or something like that. But we felt, after discussing it, that it would be best for there not to be any gap between the repeal of one and the um, other and becoming effective. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I just want to um, say that I think that Mr. Halliburton's comment about the gaps in the, in the sidewalks is something that 
we know is going to be a problem and I think we need to go ahead and kind of have that in line to be something that we're figuring out. Um, you know, I, I live in a subdivision that has sidewalks, that the subdivision is over 20 years old, almost 30 years old. I'm not sure. I wasn't around then. But there's five or six, you know, ten lots out there that are still don't have houses on them. And, you know, I think one of the the, the real pluses for the subdivision is, is everybody walking on the sidewalks. And if you're owning off of sidewalks every lot that you come to that a house isn't owned, I just think that takes a lot away. Um, and, and I just see that as being a, a real problem down the line. I mean, if you think about the 20 years it took to build the subdivision, and if the sidewalk was only going in every time a house went up, um, I just I think we need to be thinking about a way to uh, not have that take 20 years to get sidewalks in a subdivision. So, comment. That's a very good point, and right now subdivisions are a little bit slower as far as filling up than they once were, so all that needs to be thought out carefully. Mr. Kelly. Uh, Chairman Lamb, first I'll say I agree with, with Mr. Albert and Ms. Jones. I, I know this is sort of a, just a, a work in progress, so I know you all will keep working on, on the issues we brought up, but I would move for uh, uh, approval subject to the one proposed amended change on exhibit or attachment st12 as mentioned by staff comments and to take effect with an effective date to coincide with the appropriate changes to city code second. motion is made and seconded by mr clark all in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed the motion carries that concludes the public hearing portion of our agenda. We'll move on to the gateway design overlay section. We have one item under that, national tire and battery initial design review for 8,064 square feet on 1.37 acres, zone light industrial and GDO3, located along Robert Rose Drive. Rama DeRoble is the applicant. Ms. Logan. Yes, sir. Thank you. This um, initial design review before you today is for a new project located at the Oaks, which is located along Robert Rose Drive. It is going to be located just directly behind the Regions Bank and um, kind of between Regions Bank and in front of the HH, uh, HH, uh, Ashley's. Ashley's, Ashley Furniture right there in the front. Um, the initial design review for you before you today is for an NTB tire store. And this pro, um, use is a permitted use in both of the zoning districts, LI and GDO3, and was, part, was approved at the annual membership meeting of the Gateway Owners Association as an approved use at their meeting on June 16, 2009. This is a little bit of an unusual property from the standpoint of the fact that it is zoned GDO3. And Usually, um, the normal circumstances in which property is zoned GDO3 in the city of Murfreesboro is that it is required to go for rev design review before the initial design, before the design review committee. Um, however, that is a separate issue completely from this body, and um, I think it has been determined that at this time, because of the history of this property and when it was established, that um, that is not an issue um, anymore. So as we move forward today, um, this is the initial design review for the Planning Commission. The applicants are providing or showing a predominantly masonry building that will have a storefront approach design to Robert Rose Drive. The interior door, bay doors will face inside the oaks and face into the parking lot of the existing center. Um, the design has a tried to provide a similar design and what will be shown towards the oaks as, a, as another use that was approved at the opposite corner a few months ago. And um, so they, they have worked very hard to present a design that they hope would be acceptable to the Planning Commission. We tried to incorporate with them some of the knowledge that we learned from that last project in ways to um, improve this review and this design, and one of which is that they've already added a landscape, landscape <coughs> strip in the middle of the parking lot for evergreen plantings to help with the doors. As you'll recall, that was added as we went through the design review process on the other item, um, and that is something that they have already shown here at the initial design review before you today. 
because of the situation with this property and the way that it was developed and the fact that it's part of a much larger property, it does um, allow for the need for a couple of variances that would have to be reviewed by the Planning Commission and of course we would be looking for a recommendation from the Planning Commission to pass to the Board of Zoning Appeals. The variances that have been identified are that of course the separation from the parking to the building. As you know, we've had this come up on several of our other cases in the gateway in which a use requires access directly through doors from the parking into the building. So because of that, they can't meet their separation from parking to building requirement. The second variance that we would be looking for concerns the formal open space. They are meeting the overall 3% formal open space required for the amount of property that they have because um, it is a larger development. But on this one individual lot, they do not show the meeting at this time the 2,500 square foot formal open space. And staff is not concerned about that from the standpoint of if this was an individual lot of record, they wouldn't even be required to meet the formal open space requirement. But because this is part of a different, a larger parcel, that requirement kicks in. The third requirement that um, would require a variance is the separation from parking to building line. And this comes in over where the parking is located adjacent to the Jim and Nick's barbecue restaurant. And that's because when this property was, as the property has developed over the years, that was made into a separate lot of record, the Jim and Nick's barbecue. Um, we feel that each one of these variance requests are reasonable as this was a development that began and started before any of the GDO regulations were ever put in place. Um, they predate the GDO, this, the Oaks development does and they are working to try to make this building fit within our current regulations, but there are a couple of areas in which they cannot meet the current requirements. Um, today, we have Mr. Gary Parks and Mr. Carlos Hernandez here to represent the item, and they can describe to you some of the, um, what they propose for their architectural and landscaping design. This is initial design review. I would like to tell you that we have a nice established landscape row in existence along Robert Rose Drive. Ms. Holloway is comfortable with the landscaping that has been shown along Robert Rose Drive, um, but a final design, before final design review, she would like to have one more chance to look at the landscaping plan as they have proposed it. They have made a couple of amendments there along the one side at staff's request, and she would like the opportunity to review that plan. Um, concerning um, stormwater quality, the, the design before you today has not um, designed for stormwater quality but their engineer has um, reviewed the regulations as they are required under our city ordinance and will be implementing those um, from what we understand. We'll be working on that to implement that design into the site plan prior to final design review and they will work with Mr. Sam Heddleston, our engineering department, to accomplish that. So if you have any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Otherwise, we'll let the developer have an opportunity to speak and any questions that you may have. Just to fully orient myself, the, the bay doors, are those going to open facing H.H. H. Craig? And no, they'll be, the way that the building is situated yeah. is mm -hmm. the, the, there's really just a parking lot through there. As you drive down right, that drive that's aisle. the parking lot that faces all those stores at, at the Oaks. Um, no, not the ones in the back. They face... Um, okay, when I'm, I'm looking at the, the little picture here... Can you orient me on, on it? Which side you're expecting the bay doors to? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, the bay north, doors will face north, this direction. North, we'll face toward Medical Center Park. Okay, okay, so that's going to be, if you're coming out the back of Jim and the back of the parking lot of Jim and Nick's, the bay doors are going to be there. If you're coming out of the Jason's Deli and all that end of it, you're going to. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and, um, and as we think about that, it's that has become a little bit more of a utility area for for those um, for the restaurants there and the the uh, uh, little shopping center. It's it's, okay. it's not their front door. It's sort of the back back of the. Their end. dumpster facility and, and things like that for the restaurant is is on that side of, of the sure building, mm -hmm. and so it's going to the bay is going to open up. To, where the, like utility type stuff for the restaurant is. That's correct. Okay. And the, in fact, their dumpster area is exactly parallel with the dumpster area for Jim and Nick's. Okay. All right, thanks. So, so will this facility, Ms. Logan, be directly behind the bank and Jim and Nick's? Yes, sir. It'll be directly behind directly Regents behind Bank. It. Yes, sir. 
and actually behind it and between Ashley Furniture. That's right, between Regents and Ashley. Got it. Okay. Any other questions before we ask the developer to come forward? Mr. Parks. This lot or the, the previous site plan approval had an 8,264 square foot building on this lot. So the building is about the same envelope and about the same size as what we had previously proposed. Uh, really, it's just a, a different use. Uh, we had the opportunity uh, from the standpoint of NTB really wanting to uh, 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 have a store in this general market area. Uh, we worked with staff to come up, you know, our real concern given the time, the input, the energy, and the money we have spent developing our architectural theme for this project, you know, the most important thing for us was the proper situation in the store, uh, the architecture of the store, the landscaping development, so it was complementary uh, to the use and complementary from a service standpoint for the entire gateway area. You know, the hospital will open next year. There are several medical office buildings already on the ground. There are more to come. I think the last rendition Bob and I ran up was that there was, including the hospital, about a million square feet uh, of office or medical space under construction or developed in this general area here. So we believe this will be a good addition to the shopping center and a good surface for the public in this area uh, for that particular use. As Shannon had indicated, um, the, from a zoning standpoint, we uh, kind of were the pioneers out here um, and, and actually started developing the shopping center before uh, the GDO uh, regulations were put in place. Uh, most of phase one of our shop, or I think all of phase one of the shopping center and most of uh, part of phase two that we had uh, built were already constructed before the GDO requirements were, were placed on this property. So we do have some issues that we have to work through with the standpoint of attaining some zoning regulations because you know, we do have some impediments of things that we've already built uh, prior to GDO being adopted. Uh, from a site layout standpoint, uh, here is the site. Uh, we have an intermittent stream on this side of the property running down Robert Rose Drive that comes back and goes to the Stones River that drains property on the other side of Thompson Lane. Uh, and so this building will be set fairly far off the street. There is a landscaping buffer between Robert Rose Drive and that intermittent stream. And then our proposed landscaping uh, will illustrate another row of landscaping on the other side of the stream bank between the stream bank and the building. So we'll, we believe we'll have a adequate uh, landscaping treatment 
and as suggested by staff, we did add this island in front of the stores, and I'll show you the elevations in a moment to create some landscaping buffer here from the standpoint of the uh, service doors opening into the parking lot. Uh, and as you can see, the orientation of the building uh, I don't think is going to be an ob objectionable to any of the tenants. Actually, we've already spoken to all the tenants, and they support this use as well. Um, so. I, I don't really think it's going to be an objection from a site standpoint from any of the tenant front doors, main tenant front doors back here. Uh, Jim and Nick supports it, uh, and all of the tenants, the anchor tenants that I've spoken to are supportive of it. Uh, again, this is a little more uh, kind of zeroed in site plan just for the lot. And as Shannon had mentioned, we will have to seek several variances from the Board of Zoning Appeals, uh, primarily the building to parking separation along the front where the front, where you actually enter into the drive bays. You know, we have to have, be on grade in order. We will have a concrete section there or an apron ramp in front of the building, but there will be, you know, there has to be traffic passing. So that was the reason really for that, for that variance. With respect to the um, formal open space requirement, uh, we have, uh, I guess this is still here, right? We have designed right. some formal open space into this particular subproject. Uh, right now, uh, this is not, this is, this is a part of lot one, which is the, the base part of phase one of the entire shopping center. It is not a separate lot of record right now. So from a zoning standpoint, uh, the entire phase one or the entire lot one meets the formal open space requirement. If this lot were a separate lot, it would fall under the requirement to have formal open space requirement, but we are adding some formal open space, which is really an amenity for the center and an amenity for the tenant. Uh, I've never been, had my tires changed and had it happen quite on schedule. So. <laughs> So we did decide that something out here on this island would really be a good addition to the project to allow people to sit out, wait on a nice day, uh, talk on the cell phone, walk across to Moe's, have lunch, come back and have some place to congregate that's not actually in the waiting room of the store. We thought it would be a good idea to have something outside. We have worked really hard with staff and think that we have come up with a, uh, what we think is an excellent uh, visual uh, from the standpoint of the architecture of the project, uh, really playing off of the design theme that we've implemented on the Oak Shopping Center. Uh, we're really proud of this. Uh, NTB's never seen anything like this in their network of stores across the United States. Uh, but we're really proud of this. I think it's going to be a really good look. Uh, and for their particular use, I, I think it's going to be an addition to the center and an extremely attractive building. Uh, at staff's recommendation, we did. This is the obviously the side of the building with the bay doors. Uh, we've added some uh, louvers up here and some decorative treatment to the front of the building to where it and some bump outs to the front of the building to add some architectural appeal like we've done on the rest of the Oak Shopping Center. We've gotten some vertical uh, elements at the roof line uh, and we're really, really proud of the, the architectural design working with staff. Uh, we did come up with this concept to add on the side of the building that actually fronts Robert Rose Drive to add the what I'll call false storefront or or black behind glass on this side of the building, so it will give that appeal of street front architecture. Um, and I guess that's all I've got to allow. Uh, the storage area for tire storage will be enclosed uh, with this decorative uh, structure here to match the, uh, the building. There was a comment or a, uh, made in the uh, when we went to the Property Owners Association when they allowed this use on this particular lot to ensure that there would be no uh, outdoor storage or sales displays allowed on the lot. So that's already a zoning issue, but it, it's also part of the 
restriction on the piece of property. So. Those were the kind of the issues that came up at the Property Owners Association meeting. We were pleased with that as well. Any questions or comments? Mark, there, is there an entrance to this facility directly behind the bank coming off of Robert Road? And then I know it's one at Ashley, you know, coming in right at Ashley Furnish. Access to the property or to this parcel, we do not have a connection specifically with the Regions Bank parcel itself. There is an, there are a couple of points of entry. There's a point of entry off of Robert Rose Drive, which is one of the main entrances into the shopping center. And there is a platted access easement right here to the Jim and Nick's parking lot that comes around behind the center and comes here. So that's an access easement of record. So you, know, you can come in the main entrance here in front of building B, turn right and come this way, uh, come in this entrance and come in this way, or you can turn in the, the Jim so and Nick's lot. you do have one off of Rock Road? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is a is off of Robert Rose and off of Thompson Line. It's just not connected with the Regions Bank parcel. Mr. Parks, while we're on that subject, unless I'm mistaken, or unless you improved them recently, your turn lanes and arrows for all of your exits on Robert Rose and the other place are getting pretty well obliterated by the vast amounts of traffic that have entered the shopping center over the years it's been there and they're in dire need of being repainted and restriped. We'll take care of that. It's no I'm glad we're getting that much traffic. That's, that's a good <laughs> problem to have. It's a real good problem to have. I just wanted to make mention to you that one comment just um, there because this is all one lot of record it does have um, it does cause there to be signage restrictions on this property in terms of how much signage they'll be allowed to have. They won't be able to have a separate ground sign and um, they'll only be able to have one sign that's visible from the public right of way attached to the building. Um, and we just wanted to encourage them to, of course, and they, they've noted it in their comments and thing, but just to make sure to work with Ms. Kerr on that so that at the end that um, we want them to be able to be happy with the with whatever they are permitted to do, but we want to make sure that they um, that their client works works with our signage administrator on that. Okay. I think it's a very nice looking building, and you're to be commended for the uh, job you've done to make it match in fit in with the avenue. I mean, excuse me, with the Oaks Shopping Center. I misspoke there. And uh, ouch. <laughs> 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 that was a compliment. As he said, they were the pioneer in that area. That's right. We, we did a good job of rotating their design, didn't we? <laughs> if there's no other comments or questions, we're ready for a motion. I, I do have one comment. Yes, sir. And I want to kind of bring this back to you, uh, the BZA. The um, variances, as staff, as uh, Ms. Logan mentioned, staff has no objection on the variances. They seem to be just by. Uh, especially in light of this property is uh, very much impacted by drainage easement along the uh, front, along Robert Rose. That adds to the problems that in meeting our uh, regulations. So I kind of wanted to add that to something that when Mr. Halliburton sees it at the BZA, he's able to uh, help the rest of the members understand. There's no other comments. We're ready for a motion. Chairman, move for approval. So the call staff comments. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. We'll move on to plats and plans. The first item is CPAC site plan for 83,234 square feet on 8.5 acres zone heavy industrial located along Old Salem Road. Swanson Development is the developer. Ms. Logan. Yes, sir. Thank you. And um, this property is located um, at basically where Old Salem Highway and Park Avenue come together. Um, this site plan is the old Hodge building, our Hodge Manufacturing, which I think was also Central Park um, at one time, and is now being um, considered for redevelopment, or what we would consider almost like a brownfield development. 
The application that's before you today is for a proposed call center. Um, the And of course would bring in um, possibly several hundred workers in this location. The design of the outside exterior of the building itself is not going to be greatly affected by this project. Some improvements will be done, some painting, some windows, but overall the building itself will remain intact with just some, like I said, minor modifications, improvements to the outside exterior of the structure um, in those terms of um, essentially just kind of cleaning it up. Um, but there's going to be major improvements to the site. Um, the area there now doesn't have really what we would consider paved parking. Um, it's really more of a stone. And so the um, site plan before you today has a parking lot that would be fully compliant with our current regulations. It also has a landscaping plan that it would be compliant with our current regulations. Except for possibly an area of perimeter landscaping along the back side of the building that's along Patterson Avenue. That area has um, old rail ties that have actually been paved over, but because of the topography and the way that the building is actually set um, and the geographic conditions, um, we don't know that a true landscape, perimeter landscape yard along that street is possible. So that's something to be considered today. We want to make sure um, we will work with the applicant on that and developing and um, you know what an appropriate landscape area is and staff will probably visit with the applicant if the Planning Commission agrees to it um, on site to try to come up with a, a reasonable plan for that one landscape area. Um, the main focus um, that we would like to discuss today about the site plan is the scope of improvements necessary to the roadways Park Avenue and Old Salem Highway or Old Salem Road um, that are, would be needed um, for such a use. Um, as you know, this, um, this would be a major change and a new, a new group of people coming into this area. And our primary focus is on the safety and the welfare and also being of, of the citizens and also being able to handle the traffic impacts that something like this would have. Um, at today's, the, the plan that's before you today, um, we don't feel is really where it needs to be when it comes to the road improvements. However, we know that the applicant is working to try to come up with the correct designs and we also know that he's having his engineers look at all types of data and information to try to bring this up to a standard that would be satisfactory to everyone. But we are under a very tight time frame and because of the time frames that, are, um, that the developer is working under and is having to try to meet certain deadlines we're bringing this for, before you today with the hopes that if you would so choose to approve this site plan, that you would provide staff the latitude to work with the developer on coming up with the appropriate street improvements necessary to accommodate this use. Um, and so we would hope that we could maybe, um, that's where we kind of wanted to leave it today on that issue, is we know that there are things that need to be done. The developer knows that there are things to be done, and he's agreed. We just haven't been able to come up yet with the final design. And so we hope that we can work together at your discretion, of course, to do that and then report back to you at your August 5th meeting or your August 19th meeting and let you know how that has come along. Um, that's really the major issue that is on the site. Uh, again, it's an existing building with little modifications, um, a, a new parking lot that will be code compliant, um, the landscaping plan that will in most cases be compliant except for areas where we have to work with existing conditions, and of course then our road improvements. Um, Mr. Alot probably has additional information to add, but we'll be of course able to answer any questions. I do have a couple of comments. Number one, I'm very proud that somebody's taken an underused facility in our community and is willing to spend money to upgrade it for the long term and hopefully add jobs uh, to boot. So we're real pleased to, to be working on this project. Uh, all the same, we, we do see a, have a sense of a need to be able to address the, uh, the traffic implications, the roadway uh, improvements. And as um, Ms. Logan says, this plan is not quite where it needs to be in that regard. And, and, and part of that is because when you have a redevelopment of an existing site along substandard roads, there is going to be some amount of what I call negotiation between the, um, the uh, city and the uh, developer about what can be done, what should be done, what's practical to do, what is the right thing to do. And we've not found exactly the balance that we need to yet. 
uh, there's a willingness on the part of the uh, developer to, to do what needs to be done to address his impact. That's absolutely unquestioned, and it shows in the, in the plan effort he's made to date. Uh, the problem is the engineers and the uh, the city staff have not come to an agreement on just what it is or how it needs to be designed. We're willing to spend the time. The developer understands that. We're we're wanting to be able to spend uh, quite a bit of time over the next couple of weeks to get him where he needs to be to be able to, to move this project forward. Uh, we think also that there may need to be some input from our city's administration about this. When you've got an existing street with uh, utilities, there may need to be some involvement from the city. Exactly what that will constitute, we don't yet know. So there is a, a third person at the negotiating table that has not yet had a chance to be part of it. So uh, we think that uh, if you uh, were to approve it today, you see the gist of what it's going to be. It's going to be a big parking lot. However, we don't yet know the full scope of what the roadway improvements will be because it may or may not include uh, sidewalks in some areas where it shows them on the plan today. Uh, also, it may uh, require uh, probably probably is looking at the worst case or the most case scenario with what you're seeing, but it may require the curbs being relocated to a different location from what they're showing. Uh, a, for instance, our major thoroughfare plan calls for Salem Pike, uh, Salem, Old Salem Pike and Park Avenue both to be community collectors, which are three-lane roadways. Well, what they're showing on their, their plan would be a two-lane roadway, and that's not really where we need to be if we're going to if we're going to be looking at construction of improvements. So we, we think we need to do some more um, work on this with the developer to get it where it needs to be. And I think he's, he understands that, and we've offered to set aside whatever staff time is necessary to get him where he needs to be to, to answer his questions. Uh, Mr. Taylor, do we have – we don't have any idea as to how much traffic flow would be coming through traffic studies or anything? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, would you need the turns, um, turn lanes? There, we 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 absolutely believe there need to be some uh, left turns and possibly some uh, right turn lanes, or actually right turn lanes and possibly some left turn lanes, uh, in uh, Old Salem Highway, uh, and also some improvements at the intersection with Kings Highway. To date, there has not been a traffic study done, uh, although I think that the applicant and his team have been trying to gather some. Uh, traffic information over the last couple of uh, days, trying to get some traffic counts and some information. W one thing that's a little bit um, uh, of a problem to him in, in trying to recruit this uh, user, there's some unknowns on exactly what their traffic dynamics are. They uh, call for a certain number of parking spaces, which they've designed in here, and as you can see, that's a, uh, a very formidable parking lot. Well, maybe not formidable, but a very large parking lot. Large. And with that case, if it were to be full or substantially full, it may uh, be quite a bit of traffic. Also, we don't know how much is going to be, what the shifts may be, and how they may overlap. If they're going to be a, a long overlap in the shifts, it may be one situation versus a short overlap. Mm -hmm. So that's something that he's trying to, to get some information on as well. Uh, while I'm speaking, something occurs to me that Ms. Logan didn't mention that I do think I'm, I'm real proud to mention. And, and that is that this is going to be LEED certified, uh, uh, which is a, um, I guess you might call it about as green as it gets at this point. <laughs> this is a green uh, construction, so we're real proud to be able to tell you that. That's a LEED silver certification. Any other questions? Chairman Lynn, I was just coming. I think staff's suggestions are extremely appropriate. I, we're looking at revitalization of an unused facility and doing it in a very environmentally friendly way and bringing probably considerable jobs in the overall picture to the community when at a time they're needed. Developers got a good proven track record with working with the city, so I would move we, we approve subject to staff's recommendations. Second. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. The next item, one item under new business, a zoning request for approximately 6.78 acres located south of Highway 99 and west of St. Andrews Drive, New Salem Strategic Investment LP is the applicant. And Ms. Uh, Ely, good afternoon. Mr. Adelot, I'm going to have to leave the meeting early, so I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Young very shortly here, okay? Okay. Well, good afternoon, Planning Commission members. Thank you. You have before you a request from an owner of property located south of Highway 99 and west of St. Andrews Drive to zone it from its current RS-15 zone to PCD, Plain Commercial District. The properties to the south and to the west are zoned RS-15 and RS-12 
are the locations of the Bell Reeve and um, the Bell Haven single family subdivisions. To the north, the property is zoned CF, French Commercial District, and its location of a veterinary office and clinic, and also the future location of a public supermarket. The property to the east is zoned PUD and is a part of the Boxwood Plantation Plan Development. The owner of the property, which is approximately 6.7 acres, is requesting to rezone it from its RS-15 zone to PCD to allow it to develop with commercial out parcels. The applicant doesn't have specific plans regarding the future development of this property, but he does believe that the PCD zoning would be consistent with the Salem Pike land use plan. The applicant has committed to meeting the GDO standards and participating in the GDO review process when the site is ready to be developed. There should have been a pattern book included in your agenda materials, and if you look at it, this is very similar to the uh, Veterans Plaza rezoning request which you reviewed a couple months ago. Planning staff has had numerous conversations with the applicant and applicant's representative regarding the zoning of this property, and the applicant has decided that the PCD zoning um, is the approach that he wanted to take. The applicant is requesting that you schedule this item for public hearing, and if you so choose, we do have room on the first meeting of next month, the August meeting, to have a public hearing that evening. If you have any questions regarding the pattern book, Mr. Adelot or I can answer them for you. And um, if and I guess I don't have any other information to add besides that. There is one single family house on the property right now and uh, the owner of the property, he lives there at the moment and I th he's wanting to move and so that house will no longer be used for residential purposes after he moves from that house. Um, and I do have some comments. Th this has been a, a, a very difficult application to, to put together. And, and in part, the uh, problem is, is, is with the uh, property owners and their circumstance. The uh, owners of the property uh, basically inherited the property, and they uh, uh, are not developers, so they and they're not real estate um, salesmen, so they don't know a whole lot about how to deal with real estate. So that they come into the process with a need to to sell some of the property, and the need to take care of a family member, and they come into it at a time when the economy is is not really good for selling this type of property. So they are sort of handicapped in their in their application from from their side of the perspective. Um, they come into it wanting to do a good job, but they don't have a uh, what I call and, and no offense towards them, uh, but they don't have the sophistication that we've seen in a lot of other applications in the past, where they've spent a lot of money on on developing uh, site plans or spent a lot of money on developing renderings. Uh, but they do have a desire that in the future when someone comes about to develop the property that it be held to a good standard. They want it to be a good quality. They see what's already happened on the Salem Highway, and they want to be on the leading edge of that. Uh, they feel strongly that because of their inheritance uh, and their family members in the area, they, they want it to be good uh, and when they sell it. So they do want to embrace the GDO standards as what will happen. M missing from this is any kind of a traffic study or any kind of traffic design. They, they know that someday someone will buy some or all of these lots. These lots have not been created, so it may be to one property owner. It may be to, to several. Uh, they know that there will be site plans. Uh, it, would be, uh, it would be good if they were to develop some sort of a traffic uh, plan, but they don't yet have any, any ability to predict that. So uh, after uh, quite a bit of um, anxiety on my part and Ms. Uh, Ely's part, we, we uh, allow, agreed to allow it to come to you today in this form. Uh, this is reminiscent of the, the application we saw on Veterans Parkway where basically the applicant uh, adopted the GDO standards as, as the basis of his planned commercial development. And that's what we're looking at with this application as well. Uh, Mr. Um, Barry Dotson, who worked on this uh, extensively, is not here, but one of the family members, Mr. Weakland, is present. He's uh, this gentleman right here. He just has his hand out. Uh, he might be able to answer some questions if you have them. But what we're looking at is setting a public hearing date. Yes, August sir. 4th. Yes. Mr. Ives, what? Well, uh, mm -hmm. August 5th. <laughs> our That's, the That's the recommendation on August. Recommended date or requested date. So moved. Mm -hmm. Have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes August 5th public hearing date. Thank you. Our next item is mandatory referrals. Ms. Logan, I think you have the first one is Lower Lytle Creek Intercept Replacement Easement Acquisition. 
Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. This is the first of two um, mandatory referrals before you today for easement acquisition through our um, requested through our Mur Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department as they go through to try to do some um, new gravity sewer um, projects. The first one um, through the Lower Lytle Creek area will affect 20 properties, one of which is Bellwood Elementary School. The project entails installing a new 36 diameter gravity sewer interceptor. Um, which follows the alignment generally um, of the existing 12 and 15 inch diameter sanitary sewer interceptor already in place along Lower Lytle Creek. Um, the project is consistent with the Murfreesboro Water and Sewer Department's 201 wastewater plan. Um, the, um, the maps that are attached show the existing easements as they are now and the new the easements as they would appear if this is so approved. Um, they are planning to try to begin this project in April or May of 2010, and it will take approximately one year to complete. Um, the plan we ask today that the Planning Commission make a determination on if it is okay to proceed forward with easement acquisition to the City Council. We need a motion on that. We, uh, as staff, believe these are necessary projects, and we desire to move them forward. Yes. Move for approval. Second. Have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, motion passes. Ms. Logan, I think you have the next one also. Yes, sir, thank you. This is the second of the um, easement acquisitions before you. This is for the Southeast Regional Force Main easement acquisition, which actually affects eight uh, uh, of the 12 properties that are affected, eight of them are city properties. Um, this is to install a new 36 diameter force, uh, 36 inch diameter force main um, uh, from the per Southwest Regional Pumping Station located to the south of Highway 96 across from the Old Fort Golf Course to the Sinking Creek Wastewater Plant, which is located on Blanton Drive. Um, this project is also consistent with the Murfreesboro Wastewater um, two th uh, 201 Wastewater Plan and um, will allow for the abandonment of the existing Old Fort Golf Course lift station. Um, the project will take approximately 18 months to complete, and the proposed date for con to begin construction is April, May of 2010. We ask that the Planning Commission approve this easement acquisition request. Recommend approval to the City Council. Mr. Chairman, I make a, Vice Chairman, I make a motion that we uh, approve this. No. Vice Chairman. Okay, have a motion. Second. A motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Our next item, thank you, Ms. Logan. Our next item is abandonment of a portion of the alley between Middle Tennessee Boulevard and 4th Avenue. Planning staff applicant, uh, Mr. Eyes, I think you're. I guess I wrote the memo. Uh, this is, <laughs> so so I'll, I'll go ahead and speak to it. This is a, uh, 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 an action that we uh, had recommended some time back with re respect to the uh, I can't say the name, the East Main East Village, Village development that's at the corner of uh, Middle Tennessee Boulevard and East Main Street. Uh, as that project has uh, gone through the iterations of a number of months ago, uh, we had initially looked at abandoning the entirety of this alley uh, between Middle Tennessee and, and Fourth Avenue. And uh, after, after the public hearing and some discussions with uh, a, 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 a local homeowner there, uh, we are only abandoning the uh, eastern, I'm sorry, the western approximate one third. This part of the alley had, I don't believe, had ever been constructed or used. Uh, and back when the city was acquiring uh, properties for the Middle Tennessee widening project, uh, those owners who at that time were contiguous with this part of the alley had all agreed that it, that it could be abandoned. Uh, the easterly portion of the alley will continue as, ac as available for access to uh, the homeowner uh, who requested it. Uh, it will actually be part of the a driveway for the, uh, the, the project that's about to begin construction there. So we're uh, uh, after this had come before us, uh, or come to us on uh, a preliminary basis. We actually uh, had a public hearing, I believe, on this abandonment about a year ago, something like that. And then, as the project uh, was redesigned a little bit, and, and as some changes were made, we're now back at, at the point of, of requesting your uh, approval on this, so we can take it to city council. 
quit claim the property to the developers and, and move forward. All right. Any questions, Mr. Adams? Time I move we approve the recommendation. Second. Have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Staff reports and other business. Ms. Adelot. Uh, yes, sir. We have a uh, an item that I want to bring up uh, as a late submission. Ms. Logan is going to introduce it and tell you about it. And uh, I think we may have an exhibit. Mm -hmm. You already laid them out? Okay. No, I don't. I did not lay them out. I don't know. They just came in this morning. I'm not sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is for an amendment to the Avenues PSO. Um, if you'll recall, we amended the PSO about a year ago for the loft building that's out there. And as time has come through, they have come back and asked for a couple of amendments. Or one is to eliminate the requirement that the tenants shall be allowed signage on a maximum of one building elevation. Well, the, what, what we've found is that that doesn't take into account the fact that a tenant may have lease space all the way from one, one side of the building to the other. They may have lease, side, lease space on both sides of the elevation. Um, second, that they've asked that on the south elevation that a tenant must occupy at least 25% of the total rentable area in order to have a sign on their space, that that requirement be eliminated. Um, staff doesn't have any concerns with these proposed um, changes that they're asking for um, because there's several other regulations still in place that will regulate the signage on that building. They're not going to change the style or the design or the total number or anything of that nature. Um, we really see this more as a tweak to the existing plan. We ask that you consider this request and schedule it for a public hearing at our August 5th meeting. And I want to just to reinforce that this only applies to one building in the whole development, and it is the part that has the offices upstairs on the second floor. We've um, amended the PSO once before for the same building to allow the signage on both sides of the building. Uh, now what this will allow is that a tenant that goes all the way through that may have frontage on both sides will be able to have a sign on both sides. Uh, it does not increase the number of signs or the square footage of signage. Uh, so if you're on one side of the building, you can't see both signs for that one user at the same time. So we, in looking at it, we've, uh, we've met several times with Mr. Josh Hall with uh, the uh, avenues, and staff uh, is supportive of it. We looked for a way to find a loophole, but there just wasn't a loophole, so uh, we're, we're bringing it to you for an amendment. If we uh, do schedule the public hearing for August 5th, which is our recommendation, I'm going to bring to council probably next week a recommendation to go ahead and pass the ordinance on first reading and go ahead and schedule the public hearing at the council level so that we can expedite this pretty quickly. They have an employment use over there, and I'd like to be able to get them in there as soon as possible. And they've done a really good job at managing their signs over there, and they've been a good neighbor. Can I make a motion to set the public hearing for August 5th? Second. I have a motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Mr. Adelot, any other business? Uh, yes, one small thing. Today uh, the uh, planning staff has had a job shadow. Ms. Uh, Jessica Hope, she's uh, sitting in the audience. Would you stand up for a second, Ms. Hope? She is a uh, uh, student at the Siegel High School, and she's uh, interested in a career in law or public administration, so she's uh, learning about public administration today. And we have welcomed her here, and we would like for you to welcome her also. Well, thank you for attending today, Ms. Hope. I'm sure you've learned a lot from this body, but I'm sure you learned a lot from, from Ms. Logan, shadowing her also today. So, welcome. Thank you. Any other business? No, sir. We are dismissed. We are adjourned. Thank you.